Hello and welcome to All Aboard Stock Charts, our show for new stock charts users as well as old users who might be just sneaking in and watching us. My name is Chip Anderson. I'm the founder and president of StockCharts.com. And my goal for today, for the next hour or so, is to help you become instantly productive with StockCharts.com. Um, this show is intended for newcomers. And again, welcome. I want to personally thank you for checking out Stock Charts. So maybe you've signed up for our free trial. Hopefully you will. And I, I want to make sure that you understand all the different features that we have, how you can get the most out of using the site. Uh, I do have to say this is not a show where I'm going to go in depth on a bunch of the features. We're going to talk about the basics, make sure everybody understands how to use the, the key features of the site. This is, I'm not going to go deep in this show. If you are an uh, old member and you're looking for me to go deep on a particular topic, tune in in an hour. In an hour will be the deep dive show. Um, that's when we get into, we take a particular topic and we really go deep on it. But this is a show for new people. Um, the show is recorded and the, sh and the slides that I have are all available here on all aboard um, stock charts, the all aboard.pdf file that you see here, stockcharts.com slash TV slash all aboard.pdf. So that's where you can see all the slides that I'm showing. And as I mentioned, we are recording this. Uh, you can check out our YouTube channel in about an hour to see it. For those of you who might be new to Stock Charts TV, remember, you can also use the slider at the bottom of your screen to scroll backwards and scrub backwards. If, I, if I've talked too fast or you want to see a particular thing again, you can do that. So uh, with that, let's go forward to the next slide. Our, the purpose again today is to help you become a better investor. That's generally Stock Charts pur purpose and Stock Charts role. Our role um, we've been in business now for 20 years. We try and help online investors make better investing decisions through the visualization of financial data. We think that if you take great tools, you combine them with great educational content, and you provide them with great commentary, then you're going to have a really winning formula. And that's what Stock Charts tries to do. All right, so enough about us. I, did, I did also want to take just half a second time out here. We have with us in the studio Rachel, our customer support person. Hi, Rachel. Hi, happy Saturday, everybody. And Rachel will be monitoring the questions that we get in our chat room. So there's a little chat box. If you're watching this live, there's a little chat box beside the window. Feel free to type in your questions there. We're particularly looking for questions that will help uh, new people to the site, people who you may, maybe you've been confused about a particular topic that I'm talking about. That's what we're looking for. If you've got a customer support question, we've got our regular support um, capabilities and, and uh, help area that I'll talk about later for you to send those in. But if you've got something about the show, absolutely. Let, let Rachel know. We'll take some breaks, and I'll try and get those questions answered during the show. <coughs> so our free trial that we offer is one month long. Um, we will charge your credit card after that month is over if you stick with us, or uh, if stock, you find out stock charts isn't for you, you can always cancel at any time. Um, we're going to start you out at what we call our extra membership level. Extra is the middle level of the three that we offer. We have basic, we have extra, and we have pro. Uh, anytime during the trial, you can upgrade to pro or you can downgrade to basic. There's no charge whatsoever, and you can experience those levels to see if you like those better uh, than the extra service. The extra service is our, our most popular service. It's usually the service that most people go with. Um, you can see the differences between these services there at stockcharts.com slash pricing. Um, the key thing here is that as a basic member, you get one chart list and you cannot run scans or alerts. As an extra member, you get 250 chart lists and you can run scans and alerts. And as a pro member, you just get more of everything. You get more chart lists, you get more scans, you get more alerts, you get more um, bigger charts, they're updated faster, so on and so forth. Um, so, so that's the basic difference between those three um, price levels. Again, you can go to stockcharge.com slash pricing for more details. Um, now, it's also important to remember that as a Stock Charts member, you actually have two components to your membership. The first is your service level, and that's what I just talked about, basic, extra, pro. But the second is almost as important, that's your data plan. And the data plan is something that, uh, that updates automatically each month. The data plan, uh, there, there are a couple of different, um, per, different kinds of data plans that we have. 
initially everyone gets what we call our free data plan, which is of course free, doesn't cost any money. Uh, there are a couple of gotchas about it. Uh, and so let me, I'll explain those in just a second. And you might decide that you want to pay for a paid data plan. The paid data plans are typically $9.95 each, and you'll have a different data plan for each country. If you want to subscribe to a U.S. data plan, it'll be $9.95. If you want to add a Canadian data plan to that, it'll be another $9.95. Or you can do Canada by itself, so on and so forth. So data plans are kind of mix and match. You can have as many or as few as you want, or you can stick with the free plan that everybody gets. Now, with the free plan, what you get is generally delayed data, but in the US, you will get batch data to fill in for the delay. So delayed data means that um, the first 15 minutes, after 15 minutes of the market um, action happening, uh, you won't see that. You will only see uh, 15 minutes after things happen, especially this is important for um, intraday charts, one minute charts, five minute charts, 10 minute charts, those kind of things. Um, now, in the US, during that delay, instead of showing you nothing for that 15 minutes, we will show you data from the BATS exchange. The BATS exchange is a very popular, and it gets pop more popular every day, um, electronic exchange. The pricing for the BATS data, so the price that BATS has, say, for Apple or Microsoft or, or Google or any of the US stocks, uh, is usually very good. It's usually very, very close to the pricing that you'll get from the official exchanges. So remember, BATS is an electronic exchange. The official exchanges would be the NYC or the NASDAQ. Um, those exchanges will have the official um, price information for you. That official real-time data is what costs the additional $9.95. If you, if you need the official data, that's what you'll get. But again, if you don't, we'll give you the BATS price. It's pretty good, very close to what exists for the official exchanges. Now, what, what you won't get is the, the NYC volume. The NYC volume is, is or, and the NASDAQ volume, is going to be much, much higher than the volume that we get from the BATS exchange. And so we do not allow the BATS exchange volume to appear on our charts because it would, it would skew the charts. So instead, what you do is um, you can use the, BAT, the free data plan to see price information for the first 15 minutes, but you cannot see volume information. And if volume information is critical to you, then you will want to subscribe to the 995 uh, real-time data plan for U.S. stocks. Anyway, keep that in mind. And you can also go to uh, stockcharts.com slash BATS to get more specifics and to see what a BATS um, plan looks like versus what a, a, an official um, a U.S. data plan looks like. For Canadian data and other data, there is no BATS um, kind of equivalent, and so those charts will always be 15 minutes delayed unless you pay for the additional real-time stuff. And by the way, the, the fees that we collect for our data plans, we just pass on to the exchanges. Those are, those are not for us, those are, for, those are essentially the exchange fees, if you're familiar with that term. Anyway, all right, so enough about that. Let's move forward. Any questions so far, Rachel? Uh, it's uh, John is asking, what is the number one mistake new members make using stock charts? So there are a couple of mistakes that new members make. I'm not sure which one is the number one one. I just went over an important one, which is to make sure you have the right data plan for what you need. Um, another one is just to not set up your account correctly. And we have a new feature that's going to really help with that. Um, there is, there is essentially a, a concept called the default chart style. I'm going to talk about it in just a minute. And the number one mistake, I think, is that people don't configure the default chart style to be what they want. So they're constantly resetting up their chart every single time. You want to make sure you don't do that. Great question. So let's keep going because we don't have so much time to talk about a lot of this stuff. Uh, I want to first uh, hit on some, base, some other basics to make sure that everyone's familiar with how to get around the site. Uh, the first thing to know is that in order to use the member features of the site, you have to log in. And there is a, if you're not logged in, in the upper right corner of the screen, you'll see a button that says log in. If you are logged in, in the upper right corner of the screen, you will see your name. And so that's the key thing that you can use to determine if you're logged in or not. Another thing you might want to watch out for is do you see advertising bes beside our charts? If you see advertising beside our charts, that's another indication that you're probably not logged in. Every now and again, we'll get somebody writing in. They're really upset with us for adding advertising to our site. We didn't do it, 
It's just that they didn't realize that they were logged out at the time. So um, if you see ads, you ain't logged in. Um, so next up is the dashboard. In fact, so what I'm gonna do now is switch over to my, um, my demo screen. And I'm gonna quickly show you the login capability. So this is the home page. Hopefully everyone can see that. And so the login button I was just mentioning is up here in the upper right corner. Click on that. And then you're gonna be prompted for your user ID and password. I'm gonna log in to my test account here. And my password is a bunch of dots. And I'm gonna click remember me. Remember me is something you wanna click on if you're using your computer that no one else has access to. If you're using a shared computer that other people have, you do not wanna click on remember me. You're gonna to have to log in each time. This is the members dashboard that I was mentioning. This is the kind of the central hub for all of your stock charts tools. And we're continuing to make this dashboard better uh, every day. This is what it looks like right now. Hopefully you're seeing something similar to this. In the upper right corner, I see my name. So that's another indication that I have been logged in successfully. Um, so the members dashboard is essentially the home page for members. It gives you a, at a glance what the market's been doing. So we can see yesterday, the market uh, gapped up on the open and moved higher. Uh, we can also see that everything finished up about 1% or 1.5% more or less. Over on the right, we've got our market movers and we can see in the Dow Jones stocks, the Apple was the, uh, the top gainer or was the most active, I should say, uh, of the Dow Jones. We can also um, sort this by percent up or percent down. Let's sort it by percent up and we see the Apple is, was also, again, the, the biggest gainer for the day. And it moved up six points or 2.8%. That's in the Dow Jones. We can check this for the S&P 500. We can check this for the NYSE as a whole. We can check this for the NASDAQ as a whole. We can check this for other um, in, in things. It's gonna remember whatever our setting was and we can uh, then, then come back to that. I'm gonna show you some other ways to customize this down the road. I like S&P 500, let's go S&P 500 uh, percent up and we can see that um, SWKS was the biggest gainer and if we hover over the symbol, we can actually see a quick little chart and kind of get a sense of what was going on there. We can click on the symbol to drill down. I'll do that in just a little bit. Um, another thing though I wanted to show you, I mentioned this in my slides, so, um, is, is the different options you can put into this panel. This panel here, I've shown you the market movers functionality, but we can change that to be anything we want. There's four, four or five different choices, six altogether I guess now. Uh, including uh, fun ones like the ticker cloud, where we show you which the popular stocks are for right now at stock charts. But I wanna point out quickly the sector summary. This is a new one, we've just added it, and it allows you to see which of the sectors, the S&P sectors that are available, what did best um, in a particular point in time. So this is yesterday, we see the financial sectors led, but the technology sectors were close on their heels, so on and so forth. The sector, sector summary, brand new, and really cool. Again, when you select something, it'll, it'll remain there. So next time I come back to my members dashboard, this will be visible for me. All right, so the dashboard, the bottom line is it's very customizable. Over here on the left is a list of all the different tools that we have on our website. This list, by the way, is scrollable. I'm just using my mouse wheel here to scroll down to see all the different reports, all the different tools that we have, so on and so forth. So don't forget, that this is, your, this is your list of tools and all the tools are available here. You just have to scroll down to see some of them. Down below, we see a little lower, we see our scans and our alerts. We're gonna talk about those in just a minute. And finally, we see our chart list. These are the three key features that you get as a Stock Charts member, scans, alerts, and chart lists. Um, and so we're gonna dig into each of those here in just a minute. Um, let's see, what else have I got to show you? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the chart bar. The chart bar is this area at the very top of every page. Every one of our stock charts pages has this area. Initially, it's set to show you a, a, a chart of whatever ticker symbol you type in. And you can type in a ticker symbol or you can type in the name of something. And you're pretty familiar with this. Most sites have this kind of thing now, Google on down, they have this autocomplete capability and we have that as well. And so if you're interested in, in something, you're not sure what the ticker symbol is, your first line of defense is to just type 
here and we're going to probably suggest something that's pretty close uh, to what you're interested in. Autocomplete, pretty standard stuff. And again, the, the chart that we will show you by default, if you press go or you press enter, will be a sharp chart. In other words, our standard bar candlestick chart, our, the, the charts that we're known for. But you have the ability to go to other charts as well. We have all of our different chart types are available here. And so if you wanted to go to something different, you would first click the thing you wanted to go to, and then you would type your ticker symbol, and then you would press enter, and you'd be taken to that tool instead. So the, the, this chart bar gives you access pretty much to all of our tools in a very quick, small little area, and it's available at the top of almost all of our pages. The other thing is that you'll see on almost all of our pages is the navigation here. We can go from the free area of tools to our articles, where all of our commentators post their commentary, John Murphy, Tom Boley, Arthur Hill, so on and so forth. You absolutely want to spend time here on the articles page. To the Stock Charts TV page, which I will not click right now because that would be really weird. We'd see a TV of our TV of our TV. Uh, Chart School is our educational area where you can learn about all the different topics in terms of technical analysis. If you want to learn about a particular kind of thing, you can quickly just type it, enter it, and see all the different articles that we have. And then finally, this is how you get back to your dashboard. Let's see, so I'm gonna proceed forward and talk to you now about the number one overlooked tool on our site. We have, so, we have a lot of tools, I will, I will admit. We have a lot of tools. Um, and Sharp Charts is our main tool. When you type, a, you type a ticker symbol and you press enter, you're gonna see a Sharp Chart. This is what I mean when I say Sharp Chart. Here it is, we'll get back to that in just a minute. But the number one overlooked tool on our site, I believe, is Gallery View. And if you're brand new to technical analysis, you're brand new to charting, uh, Gallery View can really be helpful for you. What Gallery View is, is you type a ticker symbol, and we're going to automatically show you four charts for that stock or for that symbol that will really give you a good sense of where you are uh, and where that stock is and where that stock might be headed. Uh, we start with the short-term intra intraday view, then we go and show you a daily view, then we show you a weekly view, and finally we show you a point and figure view. I don't have time today to talk about point and figure. I will do a deep dive on that later. I love them, but unfortunately, I'm going to I'm going to skip that for now. Those are those can be a very long-term view. What I want to show you is by looking at the weekly and then the daily and then the intraday view. In other words, going kind of from the bottom to the top on gallery view. Um, you're going to get a very good sense of where this stock is, where it's been, and where it might be headed. In a weekly view, every single one of these bars represents a single week, and we can see it goes back a couple of years. And then we have the 40-week moving average displayed on top of those bars. 40 weeks moving average is roughly 200-day moving average. Both of those are essentially the same. And they are very, very important uh, support resistance levels for, for lots of stocks. And we can see that in this case. Here's a situation where IBM um, broke down at the end of last year and was able to recover at the beginning of the year and finally break back above its 40 day, 40 week or 200 day moving average. Uh, but then it had a setback, it found support here at the um, 200 day moving average, bumped up again, found some more support, has bumped up again and is now um, kind of moving sideways over the past couple of weeks. And as the moving average moves higher, maybe that will be able to propel it higher as well. We can see, so, so we see this interaction with the moving average. We can see the direction of the moving average. And uh, we can see where the peaks and the troughs are and what the prices were at those particular peaks and troughs. So that's a lot of really great information. We also can see a what's called the PPO indicator. Don't, it's, a, it's a momentum indicator. It's basically showing us how well the stock is moving up versus how well it's moving down, how quickly it's moving up and down, and whether that, that will continue. We can see right now that things are kind of flat here on the, um, on the PPO. It's moving sideways, and it, it, it's very close to its, it, this red signal line. So that's kind of indeterminate. We're not really sure what's going on here. It hasn't really been in that kind of flat uh, situation for a while. It's been a little while, but we can get that kind of information. Finally, we see down here what's called the relative strength line for IBM. We see IBM divided by the S&P 500. And this is a very interesting line. The numbers uh, don't matter. What matters is, is this line headed up 
or is this line headed down generally? If it's headed up, that means IBM is outperforming the S&P 500. If it's headed down, it means that the S&P 500 is outperforming IBM. And we can see that over the overall life of this chart, uh, the S&P has uh, outperformed IBM. In other words, it's, this line has been headed down generally for the duration of the chart. But recently, IBM has been um, moving higher uh, since uh, the middle of August. And so that means that it has been outperforming the S&P 500 uh, for the past couple of weeks. So that's very interesting information as well. Again, this is automatically given to you as part of this long-term weekly view. Similarly, we can now zoom in a little bit. So here's the daily view. And what we're seeing now is just the past six months of information. We have the 200-day moving average in red now. That's essentially the same as the, the 40 week that we were looking at. And now we have the 50-day moving average as well. So we can see more detail about what's going on. And is that important to us? Well, it depends. Are we a long-term investor, a short-term investor, or a mid-term investor? Daily View is always a great place to, to kind of start. Many investors spend a lot of time looking at daily charts, and you, you absolutely want to. But now we can look at this chart in the context of the weekly chart that we just reviewed a minute ago. We know that generally IBM has been bouncing off of its 200-day moving average, and now it's moving sideways. That's what we see in this chart as well. We just see it in more detail. We can also see now that currently IBM has been bouncing off of its 50-day moving average. A couple of times it's hit it and moved higher, and including uh, two days ago. And so we'll see if that can continue to provide support. We also see the PPO is still kind of entangled and moving sideways here for the last month or so uh, in IBM. Down below, we have two other indicators now that are available to us. One is called the Chaikin Money Flow, CMF. And this is a combination of price and volume. It's, it essentially approximates money moving into or moving out of the stock. And we can see that generally money has been moving into the stock uh, since the middle of uh, September uh, when it's been starting to outperform the S&P. And that's, that's, that's a good sign. We'll see if it continues. We also have on here what we call the scooter, the stock charts technical rank. I'm gonna get back to that later, but this, the scooter is essentially a number between zero and 100 that ranks how well stock chart, how well IBM is doing against all of its partner stocks, all, of, all the similar stocks to IBM, the similar large cap stocks. And right now, IBM is at 57.1, which is not super great. Uh, the scooter number has been moving higher, but recent, in the past two days, it's been moving lower. So that means IBM has been being outperformed by its partners. Finally, we have the intraday view. So this is, if we want to trade, if we want to really get into the, the meat of IBM and what it's doing on a minute-by-minute -minute basis, this is a 10-minute chart. Uh, and we can see during Friday, there was a, um, a gap up, and then it faded, and then it kind of came back to where it opened. This, this dotted blue line is the open for IBM. And then it moved higher and higher, and it finished by moving up during the day. And we had um, an interesting amount of additional volume right before the close for IBM. Not unusual on a Friday, uh, but, but that's kind of, kind of uh, interesting for short-term people. We can also see more about IBM here. It's PE, it's EPS, so on and so forth. So the point is, I, I, I've been talking a little bit long here. Uh, the point is the gallery view gives you a lot of great information all on one page, and it will do that for any stock. And I didn't have to customize or configure any of this stuff. I just typed in a ticker symbol. Really nice. Now, here's a, here's a special for you guys. Um, not many people know about this. But you can also, in gallery view, type comma and another symbol and hit go. And what happens when you do that? you get side-by-side -side comparisons. And so in this case, I've got IBM and Microsoft up next to each other, and I can compare both of those side-by-side -side in this really nice view. So you can only do it for two, but again, not many people know about this feature. So there you go, there's a little tip for you. All right, so now that we've talked about um, what I think is the most underutilized feature of the site and, and possibly the most valuable, let's click on one of these charts and go down into our microscope. Our microscope, again, is sharp charts. It allows us to really pick apart a chart, create, create all the different kinds of charts that you've seen on stock charts. All these different settings allow you to see or, or to create any kind of chart that you want. It's really, really powerful. Let me try and give you a quick survey, um, a, a guide, if you will, of how you get around 
what we call the Sharp Charts Workbench. This page here where we see a chart, we call this the Workbench. And you can now start to change any of these settings, and move around. We're gonna start by talking about what, what's on the chart, the features of the chart, and then I'll talk about the, the features, all the controls that surround the chart in just a minute. The chart itself consists of a main ticker symbol that you see in the upper left corner. And that main ticker symbol is what this quote is all about, and it's what um, is displayed here above the chart. It's also what is associated with this, what we call the price plot area. The price plot area is the center of the chart where the bars are. They're either bars or candlesticks. By default, it'll be candlesticks. We can change that. And so the main ticker symbol is going to show you the price. These bars are going to be the price bars associated with the main ticker symbol. Similarly, this vertical axis on the right that we see here is going to be associated with the price of the stock. These volume bars are going to be associated with the price of the main ticker symbol, so on and so forth. In the upper left corner of the price plot area, we have the legend that shows all the different overlays that we have sitting on top of our chart and what their values are. And then above the chart we, and below the chart, we have indicator panels. And, in, and so we have indicators like you see here. This is the RSI. And we have overlays, which we've been talking about a minute ago. This is the 50-day moving average, and this is the 200-day moving average. These are overlays. And the difference between an indicator and an overlay is that an overlay is plotted on the same scale as the price bars. And so a moving average, there's also Bollinger Bands, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of overlays that we provide. Those are all plotted on top of the price bars because they are calculated on the same scale as those price bars. Indicators, on the other hand, are typically calculated on a completely different scale. So in the case of the RSI, this is an indicator that goes from zero to 100. You'll never see a value above 100 or below zero. And it has nothing, the number of the RSI has nothing to do with the price of the stock that's being calculated. I mean, in, the, there's no relationship um, between the, the value of the RSI and, and the value of the stock. And therefore, RSI is an indicator plotted on a different scale and therefore in a different panel above the chart. Similarly, down here we have the MACD, another momentum indicator, and it's on a different scale as well. So it's plotted in its own panel below the chart. Hopefully that makes sense. And that's important because when we get around to how are we going to change this chart around, we need to know the difference between an overlay and an indicator. All right, so that's the basics of what a sharp chart tells you and what you can add to a sharp chart. Let's now look at how we do this with the workbench. Up above the chart is a collection of very popularly changed settings for a chart, including the main ticker symbol, of course, the period of the chart, the period is what the bars represent. In this case, currently each bar or each candle, in this case, represents a one day, because this is a daily chart, but I can change it. If I want it to be weekly, I select weekly and I press update, and now I've got a weekly chart of uh, Microsoft going back several, several years. Um, so the period is super important. This determines what each bar or candle on your chart represents. Uh, it also has an impact on the uh, calculation of the indicators, as I'll show you in a second. Um, this area over here is for when you have saved stuff. We don't have any saved stuff right yet, so I'll come back to that later. And this is also how you would save a chart and how you would view all of the charts you've saved. Uh, but for now, let's focus in on these two other um, controls that are on the left. The first is refresh. Refresh has to do with how often does the uh, information on this chart update when, when the market's open. Refresh doesn't work when the market is closed. But when the market's open, if you're an extra member, you can set this to 15 seconds, 30 seconds, or 60 seconds, meaning that every that many seconds, the chart will refresh and you'll get the most up-to-date quote as of that particular time. Now, keep in mind, you can always manually refresh your chart. You don't have to wait 15 seconds. If for some reason you're getting ready to make a trade, you're really, really, really antsy and you want to see what's going on on a more um, frequent basis, you can always just click update. Just clicking update will, will redraw the chart and with the latest information when the market's open. So that you have the ability to manually update your chart at any time clicking update, or you can let the, the window sit around and then it will automatically update it every 15 seconds or so on. Pro users, by the way, get, get updates every five seconds if they want. 
Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is the inspector. The inspector, by clicking on this checkbox here, we turn on the inspector, and that allows us to, to move our mouse over the chart and see what the actual value is for each one of these candles, each one of these bars, each one of these indicators are at any point in time. And so that's really, really, really helpful if you want to do some long-term or, or, or deep uh, inspection of the data that makes up the chart. All right, so those are the settings up at the top. Down at the bottom, we've got four different areas I'll quickly mention. One is the links. These links that are immediately below the chart are very important, um, helpful. Uh, we'll come back to annotating a chart, but this is how you can print a chart, share it with your friends on Facebook. Permalink is how you can bookmark a chart. Uh, past data lets you see the data in table form. Instructions are our help, and if you have some issues with the chart where it's not looking right, you think you can report that problem to our customer support team here. Chart styles are something we'll get to in just a minute, super important. But before we do that, we have to talk about the rest of the chart. Three areas here, chart attributes, overlays, and indicators. Attributes have to do with settings that affect the entire chart, all, piece, all parts of the chart, including its range. We've already talked about period. This is a duplicate of what was up above. But its range affects the entire chart, the type, the size, the color scheme, all these different features affect the, the chart as a whole. Down below that, I'll come back to these features in a second. Down below that are the overlays where you can add uh, more things that fit on top of the price bars, and below that are indicators where you can add more panels above and below your, um, your, your price bars on your chart. First thing I wanna point out, always click, I think it's always, you should always click these green triangles, advanced options and you'll get more capability to change things like colors and styles and how transparent something is. All that stuff is available if you click the green triangles. Second thing to know is if you're adding overlays, you can have up to 25 overlays and 25 indicators, but there's only three slots available when you first see this. The way that works is as you add more stuff, like let's add some, let's add some Bollinger Bands here and press update. As we add more stuff, here's our Bollinger Band in green. We go back down, we can see now we have another slot. As we add slots, more slots appear. So you have the ability to add up to 25. You just have to add them kind of as, as necessary. Let's, let's add a ADX line with plus DI minus DI, always a fun indicator. And now we have an additional indicator panel down below the chart. Hopefully all that makes sense. You can change parameters, you can change its position, you can reorder, you can change the color all this kind of stuff. Much more information about that you can find here in our instructions. Just click on this instruction link for all those details. Now, let's get back to chart attributes, which is one of the key things you're gonna to wanna to, um, think about. The ability to set the period of the chart we've talked about. The range of the chart has to do with when does it start and when does it stop. Let me clear out some of these um, indicators so that it's easier for us to see what's going on here. I'm just gonna clear all to get rid of all all that stuff. Okay, so the range of the chart is when does it start and when does it stop? There are basically three different choices. You've got a choice called fill the chart. You've got a predefined range, a whole collection of predefined range settings, or you've got where you choose the starting date and the ending date. Those are the th essentially the three different kinds of options. Fill the chart is the, is the recommended one. Fill the chart is the option that you will use when you're most interested in what's going on on the right edge of the chart, probably because um, that's, you're, you're focused on where the stock is trading right now. The, re the remainder of these bars are interesting to you, but they're not super important. What's super important is that, is that the right edge of the chart appear and appear really well. That's what fill the chart is all about. What you do is you specify how wide do you want each bar. That's what this is. I've chosen five in this case. And do you want any gaps between the bars? So right now we have a zero gap. Let's put in a, a, a one pixel gap. In other words, just a tiny little gap between the bars. Now I hit update and you can see now the bars are a little further apart. It's a little easier to see each bar. Maybe I like that. But on the other hand, what I've done here is I've reduced the duration of the chart. Because the way fill the chart works is it says, draw these bars or these candles perfectly going backwards from the from now. And where the chart ends, I don't care where the chart ends. The chart will end wherever I run out of space for drawing these five pixel wide bars with a one pixel wide gap. And so in this case, that was um, back in uh, March. 
if we got rid of the gap and maybe we made the bars only three wide, so we make the bars smaller, now our chart ends back in September of last year. Um, again, uh, we're saying that we prefer that the, the candles and the, look perfect and we don't care where the chart actually starts. So that's a very common situation. Again, five and zero or five and one are very, very common. Um, but sometimes we do care where the chart starts. Sometimes we wanna see the chart be specifically a one month chart. And so in that case, we're gonna change the range to say one month, we're gonna hit update. And now we will automatically expand the bars so that they occupy all the space that we've given in the chart. So now the bars are much, much wider because we have much fewer of them to display. But if we wanna change that from a one month chart to a one year chart, now automatically the bars get smaller. And this is very similar to what we saw a minute ago. But what happens if we change it from a one year chart to a five year chart and we haven't changed anything else? So we're still a daily period and we are now saying we want five years worth of data on our chart, but we've only given you a certain amount of space to draw that chart in. We're gonna have to scrunch these candle bars or these candlesticks. You see that the candlesticks are now, it's very difficult to see individual candlesticks. Instead, we're seeing the scrunch versions of those things. That's why it's super important to understand what the range does and doesn't do. Free the chart says never scrunch. Fill the chart says never scrunch. And predefined says scrunch if you need to, expand if you need to, do whatever it is you need to fit all of those things on the chart. The final choice is select start and end. This is where you specify a date here and you specify either a date for the start or a date for the end or both. But I'll also point out when you select, when you choose the uh, select start end option in range, you have access to what we call the ranger control. This is an interactive control that lets you, by clicking and dragging, specify where the chart starts and ends. And you can go back as far as you need to go, so on and so forth. Hopefully everyone's seeing how I'm doing this. I'm just clicking and dragging either in the middle or on the edges to make things big, bigger or smaller. Okay, Rachel, do we have any questions so far? Actually, we only have one, so I'm hoping people will write in more, but we do have a question uh, from Betty. She asks, if I am a member, can I try out a month of Pro for free? If you are a member already, um, you cannot try out a month of Pro for free. Um, the, the idea here is that Pro gives you access to everything that you're currently familiar with, just more of it. So there's no... You already, you already are familiar with the features. You already know the features. If you're running into limitations, then, and those limitations are affecting your investing, then upgrading to Pro is probably a great idea. On the other hand, if you're not, there's really no reason to look at Pro. It doesn't give you any additional features above and beyond what you already have. It's just more of it. All those limitations go away. So great question. Um, now, so let's keep, um, let's keep moving forward with these different options here. The, the type, is has to do with the kind of chart that you're seeing. We've been looking at a candlestick chart for most of this uh, segment. I can click here. Let's let's get this back to my favorite, which is fill the chart five and zero. Hit update. Uh, so this is a bar chart. O H L C bar chart. Open, high, low, close bar charts. We've got other kinds. Of, we've got a thick version of this. So on and so forth. One of my favorites, we've got area charts. You, you can play with this and select all, whichever one works best for you. There are lots and lots of different possibilities. Um, I encourage you to experiment and, and learn. Uh, one of my favorites is the Elder Impulse System. Alexander Elder created this and talks about it in some of his books. Generally, it's a simple system. You really need to understand it before you actually use it for anything. It's just one piece of an investing puzzle. But it basically says green is good, means the stock might continue up. Red is bad, means the stock is in a, in a down situation. And blue is, is indeterminate. It's kind of, you're getting mixed signals going on right now. And so at this point, Microsoft has mostly been red or green, kind of, kind of flip-flopping back and forth, very, in, very indecisive. Uh, the Elder Impulse System is documented in Chart School. Um, lots and lots of other options that are available here for you to, to play with and turn on and turn off and just experiment with. I encourage you to do that. But that's enough about Sharp Charts. Again, wanted to give you just a 
an overview. I don't know if it was a quick overview, it was kind of a long overview of um, our main charting tool. It's your microscope for getting into different things. So we've talked about all of this. The only thing I didn't talk about was our annotation tool. So I'm gonna show you that now. You can click here on the right below the chart. I'm sorry, on the left below the chart on the annotate link. And now the chart moves into a different mode and you have the ability to draw on the chart. You can draw trend lines like I'm doing here. I'm just clicking and dragging. And you can draw shapes. Let's get a little circle going here. Doop, there we go, fill it in. You can hold down, I think you hold down shift and you get a perfect circle or a perfect square so on and so forth. You can type text into this stuff. Lots and lots of capabilities. And uh, tons of fun and people do this. So we will maintain the position of these annotations once you save them automatically. To save them, you can um, click on the save item here, icon here or you can just simply close out the chart do you want to save the changes? Yes. It's going to ask you, where do you want to save these changes? And now we get into the next feature that we need to focus on, which is our chart list saving capability. So I'm going to, right now, I've just got one chart list uh, <laughs> with a typo, default chart list. Uh, and I'm going to upload to that. And now my chart has been saved. I'm no longer in annotate mode. And all of these annotations will be automatically updated as time marches on into the future. So that's really, really powerful when you, when you make annotations and you mark up a chart, the ability to save it and look at it later is the key feature that chart lists provides. Um, to save a chart in a chart list, you can use this feature up here, the save link here or the save as link. You can also, once a chart has been saved, and in this case, I now have my save chart available to me. It's been selected uh, here. I can delete it. I can view all my lists and I can edit my lists. In fact, let's click on edit. Now I'm in edited mode for my list and I can see the list title. I can see that I only have one chart saved away currently. I can add more to those either by ticker symbol or by typing in a bunch of information from a group. I can even upload from an Excel spreadsheet if I wanted to. Um, but what I want to do right now is actually fix this embarrassing typo. So I'm just going to click on the chart title and instead of chart lost, it's the chart list. There we go. Save. There. Much less embarrassed now. Um, again, a chart list is like a folder on your computer or a, or a folder on your desk. It's, it's a collection of charts that you've saved. And you can use them at, to store a portfolio. You can use them to store results from a scan. You can use them just to store um, ticker symbols that were mentioned on a TV show while you're watching the show, ideas, any kind of thing that you wanna do, any kind of categorization of charts or ticker symbols that you wanna do, you do by using a chart list. Let's go back to the dashboard and spend a little time there thinking again about chart lists. Chart lists are down at the bottom of the dashboard. Here's my single chart list, but I can create more. As an extra member, I have the ability to create up to 250 chart lists. And so I can do that by clicking new. And now I can type something like um, uh, my um, hot ideas or whatever. Create that new list. The list is here, but it's empty. What I can do though is I can click on many and I can type in my hot ideas include IBM, Microsoft, Ford, uh, J Johnson & Johnson, um, Google, and let's pick one more, uh, Facebook, whatever. So the, again, these could be stocks I own, they could be stocks I'm thinking about, they could be stocks that were mentioned in some show, whatever you want to do. And then just hit add charts. And now I've got charts for all of those ticker symbols available for me. And I can look at them in any of the different ways that we allow you to look at a chart list. And the most important way we have, a, a, uh, the first view is called summary view. And we can see what each one of these stocks, where it closed, uh, what its change was, whether it went up or down, and we can sort by it, what its volume was, all of this for the last day, or we can do it for the last week, or we can do it for year to date. There's all these different possibilities of how we can look at these different stocks. We can click on the name to, to actually see the chart if we want to go, go into that route, or 
we can use other views in order to see these stocks. So one of the most popular views, once you have a, uh, a, a chartless setup and you want to review it on a regular basis, maybe your charts have annotations, maybe they don't, but you want to review it on a regular basis, is 10 per page. In 10 per page mode, you're seeing the stocks listed in alphabetical order. You're seeing the charts listed in alphabetical order. You can scroll through them. You can add comments to each chart if you want. And you can quickly get a sense of how your stocks are doing. So 10 per page is a perfect way to review the charts in a chart list, especially say at e in the evening and you want to see if um, the, your annotations have changed, your trend lines have been broken, those kinds of things. If you want to see it one per page, that's what Chartbook is all about. Chartbook is one per page. You click on the chart, you see the next chart. Click on the chart, you see the next chart, so on and so forth. Um, we've already talked about gallery view. The last thing I want to talk, these other ones are all super cool, but I'm going to talk, the only one I want to talk about now is candle glance. Candle glance is where we take each one of the ticker symbols that you gave us in the list and we make a small mini chart for that ticker symbol. And now you can compare the, the stocks these, um, against each other just by, by having the same format in a very small uh, mini chart. And you can add an, one indicator to a mini chart if that helps with your analysis. So we can go down here, let's find this RSI indicator that I was talking about, hit go. And now we can see the RSI for each one of these and we can do a comparison. Finally, in candle glance mode, we have the ability to quickly delete a chart. If we don't like the chart, and or if we think the chart doesn't really meet the, um, our, our interest in, in buying or selling, um, we can hover our mouse over the chart and then carefully hover our mouse over this trash can icon. And if we click on it, which I will not do, <laughs> if we click on it, it will immediately delete the chart and there's no saving. You have to be careful, it's a little dangerous because it will delete the chart instantly. So you wanna make sure before you click on a trash can that you do not need that chart anymore. This is a great way to visually filter out stocks that you don't like, especially after you run a scan. Anyway, so that's a lot about chart lists, how you, set, how you create them, which is down here at the bottom hitting new, how you edit them, and you can add ticker symbols to them easily, and then how you review them uh, in the various different modes. Any questions on that, Rachel? Okay. They are, we, You'll have to keep Rachel busy. <laughs> uh, let me know if anything isn't making any sense. All right. Now, the final thing I want to mention, because uh, we're running out of time, these, these shows fly by, is the ability for you to customize your account. There are two, two things I want to mention. First off is the customization of what you pay and how much you pay for it and, and all the different features that you get. But the other is how you customize the dashboard and the, the different capabilities that it has. The most important thing though I want to point out at this point is you have the Your Account page. And the Your Account page is available here. You click on your name and then you click on Your Account. And this takes you to the page where you can see all the information about how much you're paying us, what plan you have, whether or not you have any data plans, um, so on and so forth. So we can see right now I have an extra uh, I'm using the extra service level, and I can change that here if I want to. Um, if I don't do anything, then my account is going to automatically renew on October 19th, and that's basically when my free trial would end. So you have to be, you want to make sure you're aware of that. Um, standard plan, standard data plan is what I'm using. This is the free data plan with the BATS data that I mentioned. If I want to change that to a real-time data plan, I click here. Here's my user ID and password. I can change my password if I want to do that. I can change my credit card information. I can view and see what stock charts has already charged me for. Uh, we'll talk about chart packs as a later thing. Um, there are some uh, emails that you uh, might want to get or not get. John Murphy's market message, I think is an extremely valuable uh, piece of a, a stock chart subscription. But if for some reason you don't want to be bothered with those messages, you can click on subscribe here. And then finally, please don't do this, but finally there is the cancel your account button. It's right here. And if you need to, if, if for some reason your free trial isn't working well for you or you want to move on, cancel your account is right there and available for you to use at any time. So that's what the your account page is all about. Don't forget about it. It's super valuable and you can find it here uh, under your name 
click on your account. Now, in the little time that we have remaining, I want to take you through our new feature. We have a very new feature, like literally brand new as of yesterday and, and today. It's called our sign up wizard. So I've been, I've been telling you an awful lot of stuff. Um, it's, sometimes it's overwhelming the amount of information that we provide because we have so many tools. Uh, we've been working hard to try and make it easier to get an account set up. I've been taking you through my test account, which is pretty empty. It doesn't have a lot of stuff in it. If you notice, I had to create my own chart list. I had to create um, my own uh, chart settings, so on and so forth. And so, to make that whole process easier, we have just now released something called the Stock Chart Sign Up Wizard or the Sign Up Set. You go to stockcharts.com slash sign up. New people will be taken to this automatically. Is it, oh wait, I've, I've done it wrong. It's set up, not sign up. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Set up, set up wizard. There we go. Now, most uh, new people from now on will automatically get taken to this page, but but everyone who signed up prior to yesterday uh, will need to go to this page in separately if they want to. So first off, I do have to say a little warning. If you already have your account configured and it's configured the way you like it, you should not use this wizard. This wizard could actually overwrite some of your settings if you've previously set stuff up. This wizard is for people that are new to stock charts or for people that for whatever reason don't like their current setup and they're okay with us right uh, writing on top of it so that's a huge warning i want to make absolutely sure that everyone understands that if you like if you've got stock charts already configured and you like it do not use this wizard uh, but if you do want to use the wizard if you're new like hopefully most people are for this show then click on the get started button and let's go through it the first thing to do is to set up your default chart I mentioned this in, as an answer to a question earlier. The default chart style is the chart style that your charts will appear in each time you just type a ticker symbol and press enter. It's, it's the, all the settings. It, once you get all the settings the way you like it, then the default chart style will save those settings so you don't have to set them up every single time. Now, setting up the default chart styles, as I mentioned, number one problem that most people don't do. They just accept the default, the, the standard look, and then they never change it. So at this part of the wizard, what we want you to do is, is look through, glance through all of these different options. We've created um, about 12, I think, different options, or maybe, maybe six to nine different options for default chart styles. And if some of these some of these speak better to you, like I think this relative strength one speaks really well, then what you can do, first off, you can click to see the full chart, and this is, this is the really nice, big, full chart uh, version of what we're talking about here. And then if you like that, you can select this chart style. So I've now, as part of the wizard, I've selected this chart style, and I've said, let's go ahead and make this my default chart style going forward. I can always change it later, but for now, during this initial setup process, I want to make that my default chart style. Now we go to step two. The step two is where we create our first chart list. So very commonly, most people have a portfolio that they're investing in, and they want to quickly create a chart list for that portfolio. This allows you to do that. So again, let's just assume that my portfolio is IBM and maybe Microsoft. I'm just on Facebook and Google. I mean, you, you will obviously type in the ones you want. You can see we do autocomplete. But what we're doing here is we're automatically creating a new chart list for you based on the symbols that you type in. Okay, so that's going to help you get started too. Next up is we want to show you some scans. Scanning is, is where you go, where we automatically go out and look for every single stock that meets a particular set of technical criteria. And scanning is how you find new opportunities to buy. Um, once you get familiar with charting and technical analysis, then you're gonna to wanna to find stocks that are in a particular setup where you might be interested in, in buying them. That's what scanning can help you with. We don't have time today to go over all of scanning. By the way, I talk about it in much more detail in the next show that's coming up in just uh, six minutes, uh, my deep dive show. But in order to get people set up and going with scanning, we've added this part to the wizard. Basically, if any of these things are interested to you, you want to see all the stocks with a 50, 200 day moving crossover, which is a pretty popular crossover, you can click and then we'll automatically add that scan to your 
to your account. There's uh, gaps ups and, and gaps down. So let's, let's do these three. You can, pick a, you can pick all of them, you can pick some of them, so on and so forth. And that's what you do. And at this point, we're now saying, does everything look good? Here's your new chart style, it's gonna be relative strength. Here's that chart list that we're gonna create for you. And here are the scans that we're gonna automatically add to your account. So again, what we're trying to do here is just give you a good starting point, uh, a collection of things to be to investigate. And so I'm gonna click here, adding, and it's, it's added all that stuff, it's set up my account, and now congrats. I now have the option. There's this really cool, and I, I, I recommend this, this uh, Getting Started series that we have. You should go and read that um, at this point. It's going to go into much more detail about everything that I've talked about uh, in this past hour. Or, if you've already read that, you can just hit go to your dashboard. And now what we see is we see here's my portfolio. There it is listed, and it's going to always be visible for me. And here are my scans. I now have four scans that I can pick. Let's look for the, uh, let's look at the gap up scan. We're gonna take this and just quickly run it. And here are the scan results. All of these are indexes or stocks that have gapped up. There were 259 of them yesterday. And I'm gonna go to page number three. So for instance, here's a Novation Corporation. And I can quickly click on this and now I can see, look, using my new chart style, I can see that this stock did gap up, although it was a, it's a penny stock, so it's, a pretty, it's pretty much always gonna be gapping one way or the other. I can also, though, get a sense of its relative strength base. It compared to the S&P 500, it compared to the S&P 400 mid caps, it compared to the S&P 600 small caps, and I can see how it's been doing on a relative strength basis. Lots and lots of other capabilities. And then, again, my portfolio is now full of those cool relative strength charts for all of the stocks that I own. Anyway, the setup wizard is a brand new. Uh, we're going to be make, we're going to be constantly improving it. We're looking for feedback on it. Does it help you? For people that are new to stock charts, it, it, the goal is to give you something that you can use going forward uh, to make everything nice and. Um, so you don't have to do it all yourself, which is kind of how things have been. Um, so I'm going to basically get back over here on my slides and talk about getting more help just briefly. There are lots of areas to get help. The most important one is this link right here. To get more help on all the things I talked about or things I didn't talk about, click on help. You'll be taken to the support center where you can look at all of these different articles. You can search for what you're looking for. Or if it's very confusing, you can contact our support team where Rachel and others will help you get, get you the answers that you need. Uh, don't, also remember, help is all about how to use stock charts. Chart school is all about how to use technical analysis. They look, actually, they look pretty similar, but this is where you'll find articles on different um, uh, indicators like MACD, so on and so forth. Um, general topics in technical analysis, candlestick charts versus bar charts, uh, elder impulse system, those kind of things. For information on how to use the tools on our site, that's what the help area is for. And then finally, we have a global search. If you, if you wanna search for all the information where uh, about a particular ticker symbol, you can do here. And if specifically, you can do, for instance, blog articles. All the blog, art blog articles by any author containing IBM, here we go. And we can now see, here's where Tom Boley talked about IBM on January 24th. So this magnifying glass search is also super valuable. So don't forget that it exists. Um, all right, uh, finally, we've got the Stock Church TV channels as well, full of educational information, always ready to help. Rachel, one last opportunity. Any questions that I missed? Yep. All right, well, thank you so much for watching. I know this has been a whirlwind tour through all this stuff. Again, you can rewind to see part of it and we will have it up on our YouTube channel shortly. But for now, uh, stick around. We're gonna be talking about scanning here in just a minute. Take care, everybody.